back again. You guys have seen me more than you've seen me in a whole month in just two days. <laughs> so, I got to do a daffodil. I got to redo a daffodil. Guys, it's been like two years since I've done a, da a daffodil. So, I need to redo the tutorial on the more current board. Um, and I was just re-watching my old videos and for some reason I thought the daffodil was like really hard and I'm thinking I might have thought it was really hard because I did it so long ago <laughs> but it is so easy it's going to be so easy wait till you see and I hope I'm live am I live here do I have people oh there we are hello hello say hello when you come in you know the drill we're going to do a daffodil, a big daffodil. Now spring, the daffodil is like one of the spring flowers uh, because it only blooms in the spring. Uh, but it's so meaningful to a lot of people. The daffodil represents, um, I know here in Canada, the, um, the logo for Canadian Cancer Society here in Canada is the daffodil. So when I first made daffodils, I donated a bunch of them, a bunch of daffodil wreaths to the Cancer Children's Cancer Center here in Hamilton. So, um, but people just love daffodils. So tonight I'm going to make a yellow daffodil. Now, most common colors are yellow and white. Okay. No, we need to change this title. So I'm going to give a few people a few minutes to jump on. All right. There, I changed the title. All right, so I'm making a yellow daffodil. Alrighty. So, personally, I really liked the white one that I made, um, again, years ago. Um, but I had the yellow mesh on hand, so I figured I might as well do it uh, with yellow. So, what you're going to need is I'm using the large wreath board. Okay. Uh, you're going to need 16 zip ties. That's it, 16 zip ties. Um, I'm using this awesome, now this mesh is so perfect for the daffodil because it holds its shape really well. This is that um, uh, poly burlap, the faux poly burlap that I absolutely love. Um, it's here. So it's similar to poly burlap um, as it's plastic and it's got the same characteristics as poly burlap, except it's a little bit more firm and it holds its shape really well and it's cheaper. It's like $5.25 a roll. So you're gonna need two rolls for this project, okay? And I'm using this yellow. We do have this particular, it's called Wide Stripe Mesh. I don't know why it's called that, but that's what it's called. Wide Stripe Mesh. And I did just get a whole bunch of it last week. I got a whole bunch of yellow. I got a whole bunch of white. I got a whole bunch of yellow and black. I got a whole bunch of white and black. And I got a whole bunch of just solid black. So if you're wanting to do a daffodil, uh, we got you covered because this stuff is amazing. Now, however, you can use normal deco mesh. Um, but this stuff covers really, really well, and you don't have to um, layer as many pieces with this stuff. And I'll, and I'll show you in a sec what I mean about that. Sorry, guys, I'm just trying to find my comments. There we go. Facebook's being wonky as usual. Hello. Hello. So, yellow wide stripe, it's called. And if you want the code, it is, for the yellow, it is RE890029. That's for the yellow. 
if you just type in wide stripe in the search bar, the yellow, the white, the black and white, the yellow and black, and the black will all pop up, okay? And this wreath is actually quite simple. Um, what else I'm going to be using is, this is one of those um, styrofoam discs that you get at Dollar Tree. You get two in a package for a dollar, so they're 50 cents. I just painted the top of it yellow so it'll blend in and it won't stick out. Um, we're going to be using this in the center. Uh, we're going to figure that out. Um, I'm, we will get to that because I'm doing, I'm folding mine four times with, with this mesh and I'm only folding it four times because when you're doing it with just plain deco mesh, you need to make four folds. Okay, so even though I'm using this mesh, and this mesh you only need three, because I'm teaching it, I'm going to show it at four. Okay, so if you're going to use this mesh, I will let you know where you only need three. Okay, um, so I'm using this styrofoam dollar store. Um, I got this yellow felt. This is just from... Uh, Michaels, the 9 by 12 felt. Um, I also got Ollie Fun uh, because I'm doing a yellow daffodil. I like to put a little bit of orange in the um, the pistons or the stamen or whatever those things in the center are. I like to put a little bit of orange just to make it pop a little. But I also had the bling tubing that I might add. I'm not sure. It came to me at the last second. So that's what we're going to be using. I got two rolls of the yellow. I got the large Unique in the Creek board. Um, we're going to need 16 zip ties. I got two pieces of um, 9 by 12 yellow felt that you can buy at any craft store. Or even the dollar store, I believe, carries some felt. Um, I didn't have orange felt. So I'm going to be using some pieces of Ollie Fun. And Ollie Fun's an outdoor material. I just happen to have some orange. And this is going to be for making the center. And then the rest is really easy. Oh, and I'm going to be using a few of these little elastic bands. You guys know I love my clear rubber bands that you get at the dollar store in the hair section. They're just to help you make your petals. And um, rotary cutter. We don't need to be wood burning. There's no heat sealing, no nothing for this, okay? The orange fabric is called Ollie Fun. And Ollie Fun can be purchased at any craft store. Joanne's Fabrics and Hobby Lobby does carry Ollie Fun. And it's spelled O-L-Y space F-U-N. So Ollie Fun. It's an outdoor fabric. Um, it's, it's like what they use for landscaping. You know, landscaping fabric, that black stuff, that's Ollie Fun. Um, so this stuff is pretty handy, and it's very inexpensive, so it's fun to work with. We've made flowers with just Ollie Fun. Okay, so I think I'm going to go down to the board, and the first thing we're going to do is the center of the um, daffodil. And if you've seen a picture of a daffodil that has, like, little pistons coming out the center... So that's what we're going to create right now. And then we'll, we'll work on to the petals. Okay, so I'm going to bring you guys down. Now I'm going to be gluing. So I'm going to bring out my wax paper. Oh yes, Walmart does sell Ollie Funnels a lot as well. So I'm going to bring out my wax paper so I don't get glue all over my cutting mat. Okay, and again... My felt pieces are 9 by 12. It's just normal pieces of crafting felt. Okay, take my stickers off. All right, I'll just put these mesh to the side and let's get started. So this is to make the little pistons that are in the center of our daffodil. Now, when you're doing the white daffodil, the yellow is absolutely perfect. It pops right out, um, so the yellow works really great. Like I said, I'm doing a yellow daffodil, so I'm going to add a little bit of orange to my yellow one. 
So the first thing, oh, you need a glue gun too. Sorry guys. First thing we're gonna do is with our nine by 12 piece, we're gonna fold it landscape wise, long wise. And I'm gonna put a bead of glue just at the bottom of my felt. Okay, just like that. And I'm gonna fold it over and line up the two edges. Alrighty. Just like that. So we got the glued edge, and you can see the two pieces. And then we got the folded edge at the top. Okay, I'm gonna do that for my second piece as well. Actually, first I'm gonna cut some of this orange. And I'm just gonna cut it the size of my um, felt. So if you have orange felt, or if you're going to make one of these and you have the ye you're doing a yellow daffodil, you might wanna just buy um, two sheets of orange and one sheet of yellow. So I'm just gonna cut this. And I'm just gonna use two pieces of orange. You can also use um, deco tubing, um, especially if you're going to put your daffodil right out into the inclement weather. Deco tubing is made by the same, um, it's the same plastic as mesh is made out of, so it will withstand the weather. So you can put the whole wreath out, right outside on your gate, at the cemetery, wherever, because the board is plastic, the deco mesh is plastic, the zip ties are plastic, and if you use Ollie Fun, your Ollie Fun is weatherproof as well. Cool, right? Nope, we don't need to heat seal. Again, I'm just gonna go put a bead of glue going across the bottom of my Ollie Fun, and it's O-L-Y-F-U-N. And I know Amazon used to sell variety packs of Ollie Fun, so little one yard increments of all different colors. I don't know if they still do that or not. But like I said, um, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Joanne Fabrics, they all sell this. All right. There we go. So we got two orange and I'm going to do the second yellow. Again, wax paper is your best friend. Next time you go to the dollar store, grab a box of wax paper. That way you're not mucking up your cutting mat by getting paint and glue and all that stuff on it. Um, the sizes are, I didn't cut anything, it's 9 by 12. Your pieces of felt usually come in 9 by 12. And that's what I cut the Ollie Fun at as well. So I got two orange and two yellow. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip where the folded part is. So you can see it's rounded here. And there's your two glued ends. Where it's rounded, we're going to do snips of strips in it. So you're going to cut it down just like that. You're not going to cut... Um, to the bottom. You're just going to cut about three quarters of the way down, okay? And you're going to do that for all your pieces. Actually, this is the hard, believe it or not, this is literally the hardest part of the daffodil. <laughs> so if you don't think this is hard, then you're going to be just fine creating your daffodil. And I believe, I don't know, I think April is actually Daffodil Month as well. So daffodils are pretty popular. And this daffodil wreath is so, so pretty. It is a fringe. That's what it is. We're making a fringe. And we're going to do this for all the four pieces. That one a little far. You just don't want to cut right to the bottom. And then the Ollie Fun I can put together and cut. The felt's a little bit more thick. Oh, 
Oh, March is Daffodil Month. Perfect then. Great timing for me. Thank you, Jill. Um, I still remember trying to make... Now, I make it look easy right now, but I still remember trying to figure out how to come up with making a daffodil on the boards. It took me three days to finally figure it out. Now, that isn't... Like, if I was going to do it for my, just myself, I could do it easy. When I, pl when I make a new project or make a new wreath, I actually have to think to myself, how can I do it that I can teach it and everybody will know what I'm talking about? That's the hard part of coming up with new stuff. And you don't have anything else to follow. You have to, you know... Try and figure it out, but also think of how you can teach it as well. Okay, so we got our two fringed orange, two fringed yellow. Okay, so now I'm going to take my yellow, get my glue gun. All right, I'm going to put just a little bit of glue just right at the bottom here and very carefully without burning yourself you're going to just start rolling the bottom where you've glued the two pieces together okay so your fringe is up at the top and you can you don't have to keep gluing roll and then every so often put a little bit of glue and then keep rolling All right, so there's yellow, and now I'm going to do orange. This definitely screams spring, that is for sure. Nothing screams spring like a daffodil. Daffodils and crocuses and stuff, they're usually the first to come out in the uh, spring. So I'm going to continue with the orange, where I left off the yellow. I'm an April baby too. And again, I'm going to just roll, up, roll it on itself, just like this. And if, like I said before, if you have like yellow and orange deco tubing, that works fabulous for the center of the daffodil. And it's weatherproof. So we got some orange in there. Now I'm going to do yellow again. So put a little bit of glue. <clears throat> put it on where you left off with your orange. April 13th, Sheila. That's my birthday. going to be soon it's soon all right we're just continuing like we did now you'll see on our YouTube channel I've made quite a few um, flower centers using this method but they're not as long as uh, this one is with the daffodil you want to make it long because you'll see the center of our daffodil it's got like a trumpet shape right and the trumpet is quite long so you have to make your your piston or stamen or I'm not a flower person I'm not sure what it's called but you want them to be long as well so you can see it and this is our last piece Look at all the April babies. My grandpa's birthday is on April 10th. All right, keep rolling. So these are really, really easy centers to make with felt. 
for it, any kind of flour. But like I said, you just need to cut it a little bit shorter for a normal flour. And I do have some YouTube videos on our channel of smaller ones. All right, we are done in the center. Look how fun that is. We got some orange and yellow in there. All right, and now I'm going to take my... No, Kathy, they, it, it's still Chinese New Year. I won't probably will not get any till maybe the third week of March. Um, now I'm going to... Now felt and hot glue, and I use Gorilla Glue Sticks, and um, foam, they love each other. So you have no problem gluing this. I'm just gluing the center of this right down onto my foam. Okay, and our center is done. Uh, the only reason I paint the top of it is just in case you look down into the flower um, you don't want to see the white. Ooh, so I just paint it yellow. Most times you can't even see it. So, All right, I am going to put this to the side now. You use tubing for the center? Yeah, tubing works really, really well as well. I have yellow tubing. I didn't have any orange on hand. So, Alrighty, so that's what we got just like that. Okay, now I'm going to take a floral pin and a pipe cleaner. Although you could probably just glue, when we get this going, you could probably just do, glue the um, styrofoam right to the board. However, I'm teaching, so I'm going to show you guys the proper way. So I'm going to cut, these U-pins are really, really long, so I just cut them down a bit. right across the room. I have no idea where it went. Let's do that one again. That's better. I'll hold it so it doesn't fling across again. Okay, I'm going to put a pipe cleaner on the back, put a U-pin, stick it into my foam, put some glue over top, and then I'm just going to put it aside until we're ready to use it. Okay, I know it looks a little floppy and funny right now, but it will because we have our trumpet. And did you know the trumpet of the daffodil is called the corona? Go figure, right? The corona. The corona. I laughed when I read that. All right, we're done. Let's no glue on my cutting mat. All right, so now we are going to make the petals. On of the daffodil, you're gonna have these big, we're gonna do eight large petals for the outside. And then on the inside of the daffodil, we're gonna do big a big trumpet. A big trumpet that's gonna surround that center. So the first thing I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you the petals for the outside. However, when you're making your wreath, I want you to do it backwards. Do your trumpet first and then your petals. Um, because you'll see when I do it, I'm gonna end up with my arms touching on the petals and everything and it might get a little frayed and stuff. Um, but if I do the trumpet part first, you're gonna have a really, really hard time seeing what I'm doing. So that's why I'm gonna do the petals first, okay? So for the outside petals, we need eight outside petals. My cutting mat is 24 by 36 and I got it on Amazon. Okay, so I'm going to be using my measure buddy and I'm going to be using clothespins. You all know clothespins are my, my best friend. 
And I got a few little elastic bands. All right. So when I do this petal, I'm going to do four uh, passovers, four flips. But if you're using the same mesh that I'm using, this is a, you only need to do three flips, okay? If you're using normal yellow deco mesh, you want to do four because it's not as thick and it's not as uh, heavily, you can't hide things in it as well um, as this mesh, okay? I'm going to use a new, a new roll so I don't, because I'm really near the center and I'll use more of the center uh, towards the center of the uh, daffodil. Okay, so I'm just going to cut the edge off. Okay, and you do not need to heat seal this. You're going to take your mesh and open it, curl up. See how it's flipped? That's curl up when you could, when it rolls. I'm going to take my measure buddy and I'm going to open it to 10 inches. Okay? Um, you can, it's hard to do it on your cutting mat, uh, but if you don't have a measure buddy, cut out a piece of cardboard or something at 10 inches long. It's much, much easier to do it the way I'm going to show you than it is to use your cutting mat. Okay? You're going to take your measure buddy or your styrofoam or your cardboard and put it right on top of your mesh. So I got it open at 10 inches. And you're going to flip it once. Okay, flip it, line up your edge. I put a clothespin on the top and the bottom to hold it in place. Just like that. And then I'm going to flip it two more times. So that's a total of four times. Again, if you're using this mesh, which is the wide strip mesh, or if you're using poly burlap, although poly burlap's quite expensive for this project, you only need to do it three times. So if you're using this mesh, you'd only have to do it one time, flip it over. So you got one, two, three um, pieces, okay? So that's the third. I'm going to do it one more time. There's the fourth. Take your... Hi, Trisha! I hope you're feeling much better, honey. Take your mesh, uh, your clothespins off, and meet up your, your edges here. So everything is nicely lined up. And we got one, two, three, four pieces of mesh. All right? Easy peasy? Did I lose anybody? <laughs> Once you got four pieces, just cut it right off your roll. Okay, I'm going to remove my measure buddy, so just close it while it's in there and you can just slide it right out and then I have a third clothes pin now when I'm making my petals for the daffodil or pretty much any flower I always rule of thumb is I always have the factory or the finished edge always to the left of me so you can see that's the factory edge here so it's to the left hand side my tattoo on my hand is always my right hand so if you get confused, just look for the tattoo. Make sure is everything's all squared up. And then put another clothespin just at the top. This is the top of your petal. Okay. Now I'm going to flip it to the side because I'm left-handed or right-handed. I always flip my, my petals to the left. And I'm going to use my cutting mat as a guide. So I put the tip of this petal on the 10 inch mark. I have the corners lined up on my cutting mat. And then where it's 21 inches, I'm going to pinch just like this. So it almost gives you, oh, really was all that, was there acid reflux 
Oh my gosh. So we have this little tail, which is, I scrunched it at the 21 inches, so it's three inches long, and it looks like a stingray, okay? I'm going to take my clothespin off. I'm gonna put a little elastic. Now, you don't have to put an elastic band on it. It's just so, makes, makes life so much easier um, because you can let go of your petals and stuff when you're putting it in. Um, if you don't have the, the rubber bands, you can just stick your petal or the tail of your petal into your zip tie, which I'm going to show you in two seconds. Okay, so that is one petal. We need eight of these. So I'm going to make another one. I did make some already, so we weren't here all night, although this is pretty easy. Again, I'm doing 10 inch. Curl up, and I'm going to flip it once, put my clothespins on, and the clothespins just help keep everything nicely lined up, because we want the edges always lined up. We want the petal to look like one uniform petal. Yes, this mesh is on the website. I did get quite a bit in, because it's like one of my favorite mesh to use. So there's, I did one, two, three. If you're using this mesh, you can cut it off here. You only need three passes because it is, you can see how densely colored it is. You can't even see my hand underneath it. However, if you're using just normal deco mesh, you want to go over four times. Take your clothespin off to line everything up. Okay, close your measure buddy, pull it out, and then we're going to cut this off, the roll, alrighty, and there's our piece, you can see we have the four, one, two, three, four pieces, again, I, there's my factory edge, I like to have it on the left to make everything uniform, I'm putting the corner right on the 10 inch mark on my cutting mat and the other corner, the top and bottom corner on the 17 and then where the 21 inch is where I scrunch in. And this is just to make sure, wait a second, that is not right. There we go, now it's on the left. Turn it, okay. And this is just to make sure that your um, all your petals are going to be the same size. That's all. All right, so there's our last petal. So we need eight of these. These big old stingray petals. All right, and this is 10 inch mesh. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off some of this tail because it's got a lot of bulk. So I'm going to leave about an inch, an inch past my elastic band. Now if you're just putting it right into the, um, right into the, onto the um, board, you can cut your, your bulk of your tail off right on the board. Alrighty, so let's get our board now. And what I've done, this is again the large board, and I've preloaded. This is the newer board, so it's got extra holes in it. We're not going to be using those extra holes. Um, the measurement tool, this is the measure buddy. It's to um, measure ribbons at, for ribbon tails and yarn for gnomes. Um, we measure mesh, we do all kinds of stuff. You can actually even make a bow with this. And it does measurements all the way up to 20 inches. It's made of recycled plastic. 
and um, it's really it's one of the main things if you're a wreather uh, to have in your your wreathing caddy um, it's $12.99 it's like the best $12.99 you will ever spend seriously I use the crap out of it so arm number one you can bring it all out to 14 inches and there's different increments so the whole measure buddy is eight inches you pull it out once and you'll see the number nine all the way to 14 and then you can do it 15 16 17 all the way up to 20 so the whole thing would be 20 inches and then when you're done you just close it all up and put it aside it's awesome okay back to the, to the wreath so where we're starting is on row number three so it does actually say number three so there's one two three four and five circumferences on the large board we are using row three and we're just using the normal holes so you're going down one hole and up the other with your zip tie all the normal holes and you'll see there'll be just one hole in between uh, we put these extra holes in for those people that use um, different flowers and they use a lot more petals and they're just there to help add more petals and stuff uh, for whatever flower you're creating so we got eight zip ties on row three okay and this is where you're going to be putting these big petals in yes this is what I invented and it is on our website you can get it on our website um, just type in on the search bar measure buddy okay and they're also as well made uh, with a, the recycled plastic okay so now what you're going to do is with this big ginormous petal take your tail of it and put it right into the preloaded zip tie okay let me go down a little bit so you can see a little better and I since I have my uh, elastic band or rubber band there I'm just going to bring it in right till it hits the elastic band and close the zip tie right over it now I'm going to cut these just a little bit shorter because I don't we're going to be using these holes on the board for the trumpet so we're going to need access to those holes there we go so you're going to cut your tail down so you can access these holes so we're needing eight of these and I have the finished edge side always going to the left of me. So it's two. Three. I need my needle nose pliers. They're easier to, uh, when your hands are sore, they're needle nose pliers and they have little teeth on them and they just grab your zip tie and you can pull your zip tie tighter. Again, keep, keep, um, keep an eye on where your factory edges because I have them all going the same way. So as you can see, my tail is in about, about an inch and I can still access row four, the holes on row four. And we made eight of these big old petals. Now this, the daffodil does get very large. It's a big flower.
Alrighty, we're half done. Okay, now I'm going to go around and just cut off all my zip tie tails. And this is just a zip tie gun. If you do a lot of Unique and Creek boards, it's a godsend. <laughs> it tightens your zip ties and cuts them at the same time. And I do have a link for this one on Lori's Favorite Tools on our website. And it's just from Amazon. This is not 21 inch mesh. This is 10 inch mesh. And we've layered it so we don't you don't see the board on it. Okay. Now, this is like I said, it's large. Let me move it up. Look how big this sucker is. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to fold, what I want to do is fold the corner in a little bit to make our petals. Now I'm going to put my little non-burning finger thingies in. And I'm going to tuck these under right now, but we are going to glue them. So I'm just going to tuck them under. So it's the corners I'm just tucking under just a little bit. And we are going to glue them right to the board. I'm just tucking them under to get them out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right. Get your glue gun. And what you're going to do is the two holes that are in between the two petals here, go ahead and just put a little line of glue on the one side of those two holes and you fold it in your mesh. Just bring it the corner. I got the corner folded around back. And just unfold it till it meets that row of glue there. All right, and you're gonna do the same thing on the other side of that hole for this petal. So you're just gluing it, the petals right to the board. So we're just undoing it just a little bit. And then you can just press it down. So it almost looks like the petals are joined, but they're actually glued to, right to the board. Okay, and you're gonna go around and do the same thing. So find the, the two holes right next to your petals. And then you can just go ahead and do the two lines there. Bring, we folded it back, bring it out just a little bit till it hits the glue and then press down. And then do the same on this side. And it actually, like I said, look at the seams. It looks like the two petals This is going to be large. This is going to be about 30 inches in diameter. So I'll go on both sides of the hole that's in between the petals. And it's still tucked in behind. You can see I have it wrapped in behind. I'm just gonna kind of loosen it a bit till it hits the glue and same with the pe petal next to it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. The four layers of mesh are to get that color saturation that you don't see through and you don't see the board. That is why we do the four layers. Um, like I said, this is a really, really good covering mesh. If you're using this wide striped mesh you don't need to do four layers you can get away with three layers but any kind of other deco mesh you're definitely going to need four so you don't see through the mesh you don't want to see through the mesh
And there's only 16 petals all together for the daffodil. So far I've used one roll of mesh and we're going to do the trumpet. Um, like I said, you can use, you don't, you can get away with doing three flips of this mesh because it is so, it's great for hiding the board and hiding everything. It's not as see-through as normal deco mesh. And I'm going to tell you that this particular flower would be very hard to make on a wire frame just for the fact that you have to glue the petals down to the board. And you wouldn't be able to glue them down on a wire frame. I would not do it on the small board and when, I, when I'm done this I'll flip it over and I'm going to show you why because you got that extra board underneath holding up your petals so they don't flop over. It's giving, the board is actually giving support to your petals. And the trick is when you're doing this is to try and keep your petals looking like it's all one piece. You don't want it looking. And we've almost done this last one. So again, like I'm just glue gluing the hole that's in between the two petals putting a strip of glue on either side and just laying down the mesh. Now it is folded in behind. And it's being glued right down to the board. This is not poly burlap. It's very, very similar to poly burlap. However, it's much less expensive than poly burlap and it's a little bit um, stiffer. So it's literally half the price as, of poly burlap, but it has the same features. Okay, so that's your petals. Now what you can do to even further make it uniform is you can try and put a little dab of glue at the top of your petal here and pinch the two pieces together so it looks like one petal. So do you see what I'm doing right there? The only thing is you just want to make sure that the glue doesn't come through your mesh because it will make a little bit of a mess. But it looks like it just kind of flakes right off. This works nicely for the daffodil when you do that just a little bit of dab at the corner. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. And make sure you got some sort of something on your hands so that when you squeeze it together, you're not gonna burn your fingers. Okay.
So you can see how, oh, let me flip this around and you can see that if you don't glue the corners, you can see that it's open here. So what I'm doing is putting just a little bit of glue and pushing it together, like clamping it together and then it makes it like almost one piece. Now you don't have to do this. This is just a little trick. I, I figured out while I was making um, the daffodil. Oh, you're welcome. I will never forget trying to figure this one out because that nobody's ever made a daffodil like an actual daffodil flower wreath large like this. So when I was trying to figure it out, it took me it took me days staring at an actual real daffodil flower. So although I kind of make it easy looking when you have nothing to go by except your imagination um, it does become a little bit frustrating and you can't even go and ask anybody for their help because they really don't know what you're trying to do <laughs> so I'm just glued like I said I'm just gluing the edges just so it makes it look like it's all one piece okay look how big it is already now we're gonna do the trumpet part which is called the Corona. So I did the corner and I'm doing the um, one little piece in the middle so it all stays into one. It just looks better that it's all one piece. Okay, then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your glue gun when you're finished. Actually, this one is the worst one. I definitely want to finish this one. We're going to glue in between the petals to make sure they do stay in place. Um, and you don't see any of the board. So do you guys kind of get why I used four pieces of mesh flipped over so you can, you don't see through it? I don't know what I did with this piece, but it's pretty wonky. It's a wonky piece. Can you use your clothes pins as little clamps to hold your glue. See clothes pins come in so handy. Extra set of hands, I say. These I just got at the dollar store. You can get these little finger thingies. I think there's three of them in there for a dollar. They come in pretty handy. Especially with a project like this, where you actually have to pinch stuff together, pinch the glue together. All right, that's the last corner I have to glue. Well, hello from Staten Island. This is 10 inch mesh. It is just 10 inch mesh. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in between the seams here, just put a little bead of glue and to make sure that those two pieces of mesh stay together. This is one of those wreaths again that friends or anybody that looks at it is going to be like, oh my gosh, how did you make that? 
I get that a lot. How did you make that? And usually I say with my hands because that's my husband's smart aleck answer to things. With my hands. Hello, hello. This is the large board. And I'm going to flip it over in one second. As soon as I'm done my gluing, I'm going to show you why it's much better to use the large board for the daffodil than it is the small board. So you want to use the large board because when you flip this over, you got from here's where we put the tail of the zip tie in for the pedal. You got from here all the way to the edge of the board to give these pedals support to keep them standing up. Okay, you don't want them having to flop over. And if you don't have that support, um, the small board, you won't have that much support. You need that support for these b these big of a, uh, of pedals, okay? So if you're going to do the daffodil, you know, spend the extra dollar or a dollar whatever it costs for the large. Spend the money on getting the large board because it, it it does help having the extra stability of it. Okay, we are done our outside pedals. That was pretty easy, eh? I'm just gonna trim this. So now what I'm going to work on is we were on row three, okay? Now we're going to be using row four. And row four, we are going to be using every set of holes. So you go take your zip tie. Now I use 18 pound zip ties. These are um, six inches long. You're going to go down one hole and up the other. Oh, it's, it doesn't, it's, because I'm teaching it, it, it looks a little more complicated than it actually is. We're going to keep these open, guys. So we're going to load them open. So these pedals, we preloaded the board closed, which means you went down one hole and up the other, and you closed the zip tie till you heard that zipping sound. For the next row, which is row four, we're going to leave them open. And there's eight of them on row four that we're going to need. So down one hole, up the other, and you want to make sure that the flat part of the zip tie is going towards the center. So that when you put the tail and the head together, it's going to go in correctly and you'll hear that zipping sound and it'll lock. So what we're going to make right now is the trumpet part, or the corona. The trumpet part of the daffodil is actually called the corona. All right, so we got eight zip ties preloaded on row four. I'm just going to put this to the side. So now we're going to make the trumpet part. Which again is a fold over. I'm going to get my measure buddy. I can use the rest of this. Re uh, I didn't want to use close to the inside because look how curly the inside really gets. And considering I was doing petals on the outside that I wanted completely flat, um, that's why I opened the second roll of the yellow mesh to use the, uh, the outer part as it's a lot flatter. You finally have heat, Barbara Craft. Oh my gosh, that is so good. All right, so we're going to do 10 inches again. So I'm going to pull my measure buddy out to 10. And again, you're going to want to do four flip overs if you're using normal deco mesh. Because I'm, again, because I'm using this one, I'm only going to do three and I'm going to keep it at three because 
This part gets tricky if it's too, too thick. Okay, so I'm going to keep it at three. And if you're using this mesh, keep it at three. If you're using a normal deco mesh, like a metallic deco mesh, you want to do four flips. So I've got one, two, and I'm going to do one more, three. Now I didn't put my clothes pins and everything on at the, there because we don't need really precise cut or angles like we did for the petals on the outside for the ins for the inner part. Okay, so we got one, two, three pieces. All right, I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to do another one. So this is 10 inches inside, so you can use cardboard. So there's one, flip it, that's two, flip it again, that's three. And as you can see, it gets really, really curly on the end when you get towards the inner part of the, uh, of the mesh. I got two pieces ready to go. So we've got one, two, three. Again, if you're using deco mesh, do four pieces. All right, and you're gonna have a square because the mesh is actually 10 inches and we're, we flipped it at 10 inches, so we have a perfect square. Okay, and where your edge is, So there's my edge right there. I have my factory edges on the right and left side of me. I have the um, where I've curved it or where I went around my measure buddy is at the top. And then the end where I've cut off the mesh roll is at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna go in, so with, this should be 10, 10 inches in length and it is and I what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrunch at 17 inches so right here is 10 right here is 20 I actually I'm going to go about sorry 16 and a half I'm just going to scrunch about 16 and a half this is what you have okay you have a big piece up top and a smaller edge at the bottom. Oh, I know why I wanted to do it for four, four flips. So I can open it. That's okay. Well, maybe I will. Let me try four. Sorry guys, I'm gonna do four flips. One, two, three, four. And I'll explain to you why I did four in one second. All right, and cut it off. Take your measure buddy out of the center. You got your factory edge at the top and the bottom. And then I'm going, I have 10 over here, 20 over here, and I'm going to scrunch up about 16 at the 16 and a half mark right here. So I have a big piece and a smaller piece. Now this will probably throw you guys for a little loop, but I'll show you what you're going to do. 
so your smaller piece right here it's about three inches and you got a bigger piece which is about seven inches at the top the smaller piece is going to go towards the outside so where I pinched it right here I'm going to put that right over top of my zip tie okay I know it sounds odd and then I'm going to do my zip tie around around it so there's a big long piece going towards the center and a smaller piece going towards the outside where's my I'm losing all my tools pull it tight and snip off the zip tie actually three inches or three three um, passes will be just fine Okay, I'm going to take a pipe or a clothes pin. Taking the top, I'm just going to clothes pin it to the back to the this shorter piece here just to keep it out of the way. This one's hard to do because it is so large. Okay, so I got my top and the bottom seam. I got it on my cutting mat and then I'm coming over to about 16 and a half and scrunching right up the 16 and a half. So we got that small piece and the larger piece. The smaller piece is going towards the outside and the larger piece is going towards the center. I know it's kind of confusing, but it once you've done it, it really is easy. It really is easy. And once you see the end result, you'll see what I'm talking about. And you'll be like, oh, okay, I get it now. All right, so the small piece is going towards the outside. The large piece is towards the center. Put your zip tie up and we're going to fold it back and just use the, I'm just using the clothes pins so I can get it out of the way so I can work on the next, the next section, the next piece here. So you can also put a, a rubber band, just go around once if you want to pre-make your, your petal. Okay, so I got it, the small piece and then the large piece. There's my rubber band. Just put the petal right over top of your zip tie and go around it. So again, the small is going towards the outside. The large is going towards the inside. And literally, once you do this once, it's like riding a bike. It really is. Again, I'm just going to pin it back to get it out of the way. You guys kind of see where I'm going with this because once I let these go, it's going to be a big trumpet in the center. So I need one, two, three, four, five more pieces. So I'm going to cut these again, 10 inches. One, two, so there's one, two, three. I'm going to leave it at three because it is thick. Cut it off the roll. Take your measure buddy out. I got the edge on my 10 inches here on my cutting mat. And then I'm going to scrunch it at about 16 and a half. So I got a large part and a small part. If you're going to try one of these, do the replay and start, stop, rewind as I'm doing it.
and once you've done it once you'll get the aha and it's like okay I know how to do this this is easy so I put just put elastic band I just went once over it so there's one This is one, two, three. Again, I'm only doing three because this stuff is so thick. Cutting it off the roll. Take your measure out of the center. I want my surged edges or the factory edges on the right and left hand side of me. And I'm going to scrunch up at the 16 and a half. And I just pick 16 and a half. That way I know the long part is going to be the same size and the small part is going to be the same size. Yes, this will be on YouTube. Ah! Broke that. Just go around it once. Just to keep it. There we go. So that's two. So one, two, three. Cut it off the roll. Take your measure out. Flip the whole thing to the left or the right. Put your factory edge on the 10 inch. Go over to around the 16 and a half and just scrunch it up right there. We need eight of these. Yeah, I'm the same too when I'm watching something on YouTube. I like to watch the replay so I can start, stop, try it with the person, <clears throat> whatever I'm learning, go back, zoom in. We don't expect, like, I do not expect you guys to watch me and figure it out right away. Some of the, some of the ideas are a lot easier than others. But like I said, once you do it once, and you finally get the, oh, okay, then it's easy. Scrunch it right down. And then I'm just going to put it the rubber bands. If you're ever at the dollar store, grab a couple of these bags. There's 500 in each. They're in the hair section. They make your flower making, making flower wreaths so much easier. Because you can pre-make everything and then I just literally have to stick this into the zip tie. I don't have to worry about if I let go, if it's going to go flying off the board or anything. It was only four that I needed, right? One, two, three, four, oh, five. I need one more. So I didn't quite use a whole two rolls. Um, I probably would have used about one and a half. If I did my outside petals at three passes instead of four. fifth one so I got about a quarter of a roll left on the second roll oh I have one here too I never used it a quarter of a roll on the second roll like I said I used four passes 
on the outside. So I would have normally probably have used one and a half rolls. So make sure you have two rolls of white or yellow or whatever color you're going to use. I don't know if there's any other color of a daffodil. Do you guys know? I've only seen white and yellow. All right, now we're just going to zip them all in. Yeah, this is called a wide stripe mesh. I'm not sure why it's called stripe, but... And I do have lots of it. Well, I did have lots of it on my website. <clears throat> peach. I never seen a peach daffodil. All right, so now, again, the small part of this is going towards the outside. I am going to lay where my elastic band is right onto my zip tie the middle of my zip tie and just go around the elastic band. So much easier. Pull it tight, cut it off, pull this back, and again I'm just using clothespins to get it out of my way. Pink and white? <gasps> pink and white daffodil. That would be pretty. Pink's my favorite color. So again, just putting it right on the board. The elastic, where the elastic band is, is where I'm going around uh, with the zip tie. I really wish where I, I knew where I put my my needle nose pliers. Pull it tight and cut off the zip tie. Yet. Oh, there they are. Pull this back and just close pin it out of the way. Almost done. Yeah, the, that's why I'm doing this daffodil video because the old ones are like really old and we use way more zip ties. This will be replacing that. So you can see why I did the outside petals first for teaching purposes. Although I'm not really getting any frays or anything from, uh, from it rubbing on my clothes or my arms or anything, so it's not too bad. And we are getting very full. I have a peach or a coral fabric mesh that if there's a peach colored daffodil, it would be really pretty then. Okay, I have one more left to squeeze in there. Last one. Last one. Get it in there. Ooh, I'm gonna use some elbow grease in here right now with this last one because it's tight. Alrighty. Yay! Okay. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take and we're gonna pull this back. This the taller trumpet part and we're going to kind of wrap it around each other. Pull it back and then you can, the shorter one, you can open up the layers so it's a nice ruffle. So go around and just open your layers. Just 
separating the pieces on the shorter part of um, that piece we just put in. Okay. Alrighty, and then we're going to pull the top trumpet part kind of back. And just go piece by piece. Start on one piece and then pull it back. I'm going to cut some of these strings off. Just give it a pull and pull it back. We've got to get that center in there. Do we see a daffodil forming yet? <laughs> I hope so. All right, spread it right back. And then where did our center go with our little piston thingies? Here we go. Now this will fit, this is that uh, disc that we, I got from Dollar Tree, and you get a two pack, and this is the um, orange Olifun and the felt, and I know it's floppy, but you can see it's going to be a nice tight fit, and the, the mesh is going to kind of hold up our floppy little pistons there. So I'm going to take my clothes, my uh, pipe cleaners. I'm going to go right down the center, two holes. I'll flip it over. So we got a nice, still a nice, neat back. And I'm going to go in with the two pipe cleaners right in the center. Okay. So I'll go down one hole in the center. Go down the other. Now I'm going to tell you it's a tight fit, so you're going to have to wiggle. So I'm just going to lightly just give it a couple twists even though it's not tight. And I'm gonna wiggle this into there. You probably won't even need glue or anything because hold your mesh back and wiggle it in. It's a tight fit, like I said, but it does fit. And you get these styrofoam discs at Dollar Tree. There we go. There we go, right in there, flat on the board. And then we can go wrap around the trumpet part. So we want the, the tall part going around our center here. And the top, the trumpet is called the Corona. I just thought that was kind of bizarre in the days right now. And all that stuff we're going through. And we pull all these up right through the center here. Make sure they're all sticking up. And the mesh will keep them sticking up. All right, we'll flip this over. Now I can tighten it a little better. Although that ain't coming out because it's pretty tight fitting in there. Okay, twist it. Cut the rest off. And then you can go back into the holes there so you have nothing scratching your door. Make sure you're gonna put your business card or a sticker on the back so when your customer's friend from down the road sees this ginormous daffodil. She knows where to send her friend to get one as well. And then we're going to do the same like we did with the small. We're opening up the poops. We're going to do that with the large pieces here. Just pull it apart and give it some dimension. This one I can't pull apart. There, 
see that wasn't so hard it just looks hard once you start going at it and make one it's very very easy all right but it's big that's it guys that's it that's all there is to making the daffodil and this is my literally my own technique I came up with uh, when I first started Unique in the Creek. Because I brought a bunch of these to the Cancer Center. What do you guys think? Yes, I do sell this mesh. This is, uh, it's called a wide, for, uh, wide stripe, S-T-R-I-P. I'm not sure what I did wrong here. I, you can see I did, actually, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to show you how easy it is to fix something. So I think it is this zip tie right here. I'm going to snip it off because I think I put it in wrong. See how it's, it's supposed to be the edges that are on the outside, not the curve. So, I just did it wrong. We want the edges on the right and left. And that way we can open, we can open up the trumpet. So, maybe I did that on purpose so I can show you guys how easy it is to fix a mistake. Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna go down down and up and there's my you can see it's right on the board my styrofoam go down and up with your zip tie the small part is going towards the outside the large part and there we go now i can open up the ruffles i was wondering what why it was weird there There's two of them I did that wrong. And just pull it tight and cut off. Open up the small part, get the ruffles going. All right. And then you can pull the top. And then there's the piece next to it I did wrong as well. So I'm going to fix that as well. one there we go see how it's I got the folded part I don't want the folded part I want the the open part so I can open up the ruffles so you want to make sure that your factory edges are on the right and left And then we can open up these layers and give it some dimension. Small part going towards the outside, large part going towards the center. Thank you, everybody. It really is not that hard. Stop, start, rewind. One Replays are a wonderful thing. If you make a mistake, you've just seen how easy it was to fix it. There we go. And then we'll open up our ruffles there. So again, if you're using this mesh, either in white or yellow, you only need three flips instead of four, like I did for the outer petals here. And same with the inside, you only need three. If you're using just normal deco mesh, especially white, white normal deco mesh is very see-through. Flip it over four times, okay? Just to get your layers.
Um, I do have yellow felt I'm going to be putting on our website. So if you can't get any felt, don't worry. I'm going to be putting some on. I did get some in from a wholesaler that we deal with here in Canada, and they have it really inexpensive. So I bought some. Just for those of you that can't get out. There we go. A daffodil. This will totally amaze and wow any of your friends, anybody in the neighborhood. Look at this. Flip it over. You're going to find your hanging holes right at the top. The two holes that don't belong anywhere. Take a zip tie or a piece of wire or whatever down and up and make yourself a hanger to hang it and there you go you have yourself a daffodil a big daffodil what do you guys think that was pretty easy eh? come on I know it made it look difficult but it is really easy I dare you just to make one And take your time take your time make sure your petals are nice and they look like one uniform piece and easy what do you guys think pretty not 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 bad eh I forgot how much I like to do the daffodil once I figured it out Coming up with it, not so much. I remember throwing my board across the room, I don't know how many times when I was trying to come up with this. But I never give up. And you guys shouldn't either. Never give up. So there you go. There's the side. You don't see any board, you just see a ruffles. And it is. 30 inches in diameter and the back of your board nice and neat make sure you put your business tape your business card if you're selling put a sticker make sure your customer knows where to get their next flower because who knows they might want to do their whole garden wall in flower wreaths because I've done it and it's beautiful <laughs> I did a whole pool wall in flower wreaths. All right, guys, there you go. The daffodil has been resurrected again. All right, guys, I'm going to snuggle my husband. It's a cold Saturday night. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you all, all for joining me. Uh, make sure you hit that S-H-A-R-E button um, and tell all your friends. How cool Lori from Unique in the Creek is. That's me. How cool I am. Because I'm cool. <laughs> All right, girls. Oh, boys. I cannot wait to see your daffodils. Um, have a great night. And um, get the yellow and white while it's there. Because I don't know how much more I can get. All right, guys. Because I've gotten a whole bunch already before and I got a second load in and I don't know how much the wholesaler is going to have left so all right guys talk to you soon bye everybody